not bad. Are you ready for a new affordable board video? I hope so, because that's exactly what this is. And this time it is brought to you by Timu. Timu.com, more specifically the Timu app. Timu is actually sponsoring this content. They have paid my demo fee and they provided me with a credit to allow me to shop around and buy some things on Timu that they thought you might want to know about. And I used that credit to buy three pedals that a bunch of you, a bunch of people in the audience have been asking me to cover. Well, at least one of the three, but I figured I might as well get all three right. But also I've got a bunch of other stuff in here <laughs> that I used to like pad out my order and fill that credit that I got. But first, Timu wants me, Timu, Timu, however it's pronounced, wants me to tell you that I should please encourage your viewers to download the Timu app through my link or code in the description, they can get $100 coupon bundle. It's a $100 coupon bundle, not $100 coupon. Do you, do you understand? Do you get it? It's $100 worth of coupons, but not one coupon for $100. It's a bundle of coupons. So click the link down in the description to check that out, uh, to get access to that bundle. Use code DKH2372, search word on the Timu app to claim. So what did I get? Let's check it out. At the top of the bag, something I've been needing, Velcro. I'm always <laughs> needing pedal board Velcro. Here's a question I had. Is it hook and loop or just hook or loop? There's the hard stuff. And there's the soft stuff. I don't need the soft stuff. I only need the hard loopy stuff. <laughs> I'll use the soft stuff on something. I'll put it in a drawer and someday when I build a pedal board from scratch, I'll use it for sure. Okay, what else do I have in here? I'm gonna grab the pedals because you're curious about those, right? I know you are. What I've got here is the new Envave pedals. This one is the Mini Universe. This is the reverb pedal. Everyone has been asking me to cover the mini effects. I think it's a multiple distortion machine and the mini amp, the mini amp sim sort of pedal. Also, I forgot about this. I bought a kazoo. <laughs> if you're gonna pad out your order, you might as well buy a kazoo, right? Was this an electric kazoo or was it just a regular kazoo? I honestly don't remember at this point. It's blue. There's color codes on it. And it's like modern looking. You can see the graphic on there. All right, here we go. Yes. Oh, that is a high tech looking kazoo. Look at that. Finally, a kazoo for the 21st century. <laughs> It looks like it should be electric, but it's not. It's an acoustic kazoo. <laughs> Comes with a wristband so you don't lose your kazoo. Or I guess that's a that's like a necklace lanyard so you could hang your kazoo right there. And always have it with you. And it comes with a bunch of extra kazoo diaphragms. What a premium kazoo. Hmm. I'll share that with the kids. <laughs> what else? I went a little crazy with the rest of this and I just bought Star Trek stuff. It's all Star Trek stuff. <laughs> Got a decal for the car. 
a bunch of this is for my wife because my wife and I both love Star Trek. But uh, look, I've got to, you know, live long and prosper. Spock hand pin there. Badge pin. Bunch of badge pins. Oh my gosh, how many badge pins? <laughs> I got two big gold ones and two big silver ones. All right. Here, I'll put one on right now. There we go. Got a little badgy there. And I got a two pack of Enterprise shaped bottle openers here because why not? <laughs> I was like, I gotta, I gotta spend my entire credit. Might as well just buy some goofy stuff. All right. The pedals, the thing we're all here for. Let's crack open the reverb first since so many people were curious about this. And you know, like I get it. They're very, very affordable for a pedal that people are saying is a Strymon killer. Could it be possible? Mvave, by the way, is the company responsible for the Kuvave fuzz. They changed their name from Kuvave to Mvave. I'm not sure why I'm fond of the name Kuvave. <laughs> even though it seems a bit nonsensical to me. There we go. There's the mini effects, and this will be the mini amp. Interesting case design here. Super, super thin. Gonculator for scale. Look at how much thinner that case is compared to the standard thickness gonculator here. The standard by which we measure all pedal thickness gonculators. It's a good, like half an inch thinner. That's interesting. All right, let's get them plugged in and see how they sound. In an affordable tradition, I'm gonna use an affordable guitar. This time, this Three Brothers Super Strat style thing here has got a humbucker and two singles. So it's a great pedal demoing guitar. And of course, I'm gonna be running into the Two Princeton's rig. All right, all right, enough of that. Let's check these guys out here. Might as well go in order, keep you guys watching the video to stay tuned for the mini universe to hear that reverb. Let's start with the mini effects. We've got gain level, bass, mid, treble, and a selector knob that goes from one to nine. It has information for what we're dealing with on the back. Might as well take a peek. Boost, overdrive TS, overdrive blues, overdrive DB, Overdrive Amp, Distortion SC1, Distortion British, Distortion MT1, and Distortion MT2. I'll get a photo of that and put it up so we can all have a look. So this is just a boost. Let's put everything at noon. It sounds like a boost. You use that as an EQ. Do like a mid boost. Does it have any uh, distortion to it? It's a little crispy. hearing quite a bit of like digital noise in the signal. Sounds like it's picking up some frequencies. All right, on to number two, which I think was the Tube Screamer. EQ, why not? It 
It sounds like a two screamer, but it also sounds like this high pitched digital whine that isn't going away. On to number three, I forget what this was. The Blues Driver, maybe? That sounds fat. something cool going on until I missed it up. That high-pitched digital whine is still there, even with the treble taken all the way out. It could just be my power source. It could be them not liking talking to each other. I don't know. On to setting four. to be an amp overdrive. Really heavy. By heavy, I mean it has a lot of low end to it. six which is a distortion the SC1 Try pulling the other pedals to see if that helps with that high pitched noise. There's a hiss, but that bright high pitched whine has gone away. It doesn't like talking to the other pedals. All right. Scoot! want just a nasty ridiculous digital distortion right what's after that that has been six this is a british distortion on seven 
This is an MT1, and the next one is the MT2. So metal tone one, metal tone two. Now the metal tone too. Might as well gain that gain. Oh, that's better. Once we got that high-pitched whine figured out, figured out that it doesn't like sharing a power supply with those other digital pedals. Sounds all right. It's a digital distortion. It's doing digital distortion sounds. Let's see if these two pedals play together well. I'm not hearing that whine, so this was the culprit. It didn't like sharing with one of these two pedals, maybe both of them, who knows? So this is the amp simulator. I'll try to go through this quickly so we can get to the reverb. What have we got here? Dark DLS. What is a DLS? Tweed CL. Big Blue M. Bad KTOD. BE Flagman. JM800 EC Powerball. Mess Dual R SL100 lead. So we'll decode those in the comment section. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Now this doesn't say that it's a cab sim, so I'm gonna assume it's normal and fine to run it into my Princeton's. bad. skunky there.
really meant to be a clean amp sound. Has that kind of like Fender sort of twang to it. Not bad. On to number two. I think this is supposed to be a tweed sort of thing. Try it on the single. I mean, this was kind of like, you want to mess around with a digital version of various different sounds. Like I would stack this against my late 90s Zoom 2100. But this is sounding pretty dang smooth through the Princeton so far. We haven't gotten into like gainy stuff yet, but it's giving me this kind of like, sweetened preampy sort of sound. On to number three. Here we go. Now we've got some gain on it. BG Blue M. That's sounding a bit artificial to me. A lot bit artificial. Something about the way the mids feel really gives it away. Number four.
part, that one actually sounds pretty serviceable. Go faster! We're only on five! What's that? B.E. Flagman is what this amp patch is called. All right. Let's keep going. JM 800. Number seven, EC Powerball. is the SL100. Oh, oh, that hurt my ears a little bit. Wow. I think in between this one and this one, if you're seeking out digital distortion sounds for the sake of digital distortion sounds, it's a good place to start. If you're searching for high quality, modern, accurate representations of actual circuits and units and amplifiers and things like that, you're going to have to spend more money. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, if you want that that digital distortion fix, that nasty, gritty, listen to the sharp edges of that computer code sort of distortion. It's there, you got it. Let's check out the mini universe now, the one you've all been waiting for. The one I've been keeping you engaged 
in this video, just knowing it's going to show up. Or you could just go down to the chapter markers and get straight to it, right? Let's see. I'm getting... Maybe this is where that high-pitched whine was coming from. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hearing that high-pitched whine in there. I, I have a feeling it's mostly coming from this and then was bleeding into this. Let's try putting the amp pedal on a different power circuit. Nah, it's still there. We'll just have to deal with it. We've got decay, mix, parameter one, parameter two, and parameter three. Let's bring in like that tweed sound. So this is the room. I guess very wet. Oh, there's like a modulation on it. bad. I'm going to get this on a one spot to see if we can get rid of that high pitched wine. Yep, that did it. Put it on a one spot and now it's not whining anymore. There is like a digital static in the background, but it's not this sort of thing that was going on. Yeah, that's, that's pretty great for a cheap pedal. parameters do high pass low pass and drift so these are EQ filters and then the drift is that chorusing kind of like vibrato sort of sound all the way wet. I'm going to say yes, despite the power issues where it needs to be on its own power supply. Before getting into all the other settings, that's a fun sound from an affordable board reverb. Why? 
why not? All right, let's check out the other settings. This is Hall. Is it going to be similar stuff? Yeah, the first three all have the same controls. I need to <laughs> repair that patch cable, obviously. settings here. It has a very lo-fi digital sort of thing going on, but the lushness of it and like the granular sort of nature of it is compelling in a creative way. Here we go. I'm not expecting anything out of the spring setting. I'll be shocked. I'll be shocked if I enjoy this. Let's put everything to noon. And let me look at the back. Low pass, high pass, and dwell. trying really hard to do it. That shift that it's doing is trying to do a drip, but it's not. It's strangely close though.
try. There was something approaching the semblance of a drip in there. It wasn't dripping. It's got this lo-fi grit to it. It also has pretty intuitive high pass, low pass filter thing going on, helping a lot. You've got decay, mix, and dwell. <laughs> Sounded weirdly good with Dick Dale style playing. If that plays well with the power situation on the Afforda board, it might, it might take the spot of the most guy. Cause that's given me something surfy to work with. Stay tuned. We'll have to do a comparison. Shimmer now. So far I'm impressed with this. High pass, pitch, and amount. That's fun to play with just by itself. I see why people have been asking me to cover this. Thank you for making this possible, Timu. That's cool. This is the most interesting, best, I don't know, but most interesting sounding multi reverb effect that I can remember covering on the Afforda board. <laughs> Cloud.
assume high pass, low pass, and some sort of modulation effect. Diffusion. on the praise and worship before the board. Remember that? So this is Blom, B-L-O-M. I think they meant Bloom. High pass, low pass, and length. So the length of the balloon. Let's turn it all the way up. Midway. All the way down. Interesting. Reset time, high pass, low pass, and reset time. Not totally sure what's going on there. Kind of feels like you have to hold the note for a while for it to come in, and if you don't hold it, then it doesn't come in. and worship before the board. Cool sounds. Lo-fi. and drift. So let's take them all, all the way down. Which way is down? 
side you get like this like Gregorian chant low vowel vocal thing going on. Yeah, there's like a humanizer sort of sound to it. This is a hard one. It's delivering some surfy characteristics, but it, it took some tweaking and dialing to find what sounds closest to me. Otherwise, it's just gonna be this kind of somewhat chorusy, ambient, washy sort of reverb, but it does have some springy qualities in there that are, they're worth mentioning. I would not recommend this as a surf reverb for someone who's searching for a surf reverb. But for someone who likes surf sounds, likes surf reverb sounds, and they're looking for a cheap multi-reverb that leans heavier into ambient sounds, I think there's something there. Let's, uh, let's see how it does on the affordable board. Yeah, there's a high-pitched whine there. compares surf-wise against the most guy here. Definitely need to bring the mix up a bit. Thank you. 
feeling that slapback quality to the most guy, that built-in brick sort of thing going on, compared to the digital approximation of a spring reverb. It doesn't have that slapback quality. Can I live with that high-pitched whine, though? That's a tough one. That's actually really tough. If if it didn't have that high pitched whine going on when turned on, I would I would be kicking this off right now. This has that more analog audio quality going on, and it doesn't whine. But damn it, man. Those. Big, lush, ambient reverbs in there. If you've got a pedal board situation where you can run this on isolated power, I think that's really cool. For what it costs, absolutely. Not bad. What do you guys think, though? Would that be a valid purchase for you? The MVAVE Mini Universe. I forget what it was. It was like in the 30s. I'm not going to put it on the affordable board right now. It's not going to kick off the most guy just yet. If I find myself with an affordable board power supply that truly addresses the noise issues that I'm experiencing with the mini universe. 
I think this is going to go on the board. It just, it just has to, right? I think that's what's going to happen. I might have to test a bunch of power supplies I have around here on my own time to see if I can make that work. Right now, the, the whole affordable board is powered off of an integrated battery in this Nomad board here. And when I was running everything on the table, it was running off of this Azor power brick I have. I have a bunch of other cheap, like import style bricks here. I have that effects bakery power supply. I should try that and see if that addresses that issue. But until then, it's not making it on the board. As far as the other pedals went, I already said my piece on them. If you want digital style distortion, there it is. I was actually pretty impressed with the clean sounds on this. Not bad. I could see myself using those as like a tone sweetener. It was fun before the reverb, especially with those clean Fender sounds to dial in the surfy sound. For the money, they are what they are. What do you guys think? Tell me down in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for Timu, Temu, however it's pronounced. Go check out the app. Let me pull up my code again. Make sure I didn't miss any information here. Please encourage users to download Timu app and search to the code to get 100 coupon bundle immediately after they download the Timu app. Search my code DKH2372 on the Timu app to get that $100 coupon bundle. It's not one coupon for $100. It's a bundle of coupons that adds up to $100 worth of savings. So go check it out. Click the link down below to say thanks to Timu. Unless you don't want to. What do you guys think of Timu? Do you have big opinions about that app, about that service, about that website? Some of you have already bought stuff from them. I know you have because you've posted about it on the, uh, on the 60 Cycle Home Facebook group. So I want to hear your opinions about Timu as a retailer, as a source of cheap pedals in the comment section. And other than that, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments, support us on Patreon, buy a shirt if you are naked, and stay grounded. Bye everybody.